What are you drinking there, bud? Uh, this is a noon tablet and then just some uh, drinkable carbs. Mm. A little something nice to sip on, you know, chunks in my water bottle. I do drinkable carbs as well, um, mostly in milkshake form. That's <laughs> my go to. Not powders. <laughs> which might they're way less fun. Which might be the difference, by the way. I think that's the only difference between our, our performance when it comes to CrossFit. So Definitely. I just have way too many milkshakes and we just have <laughs> way, way too much of a target. Way too much of a target. <laughs> Yum. Uh, so, Tim, we're here. It's uh, it's the evening of the first day at the Reykjavik CrossFit Championships. You've already done this like wild 5K up the side of a mountain. So crazy. Talk, talk me about talk to me about this event that that we saw earlier this afternoon. Yeah, so it was really cool. Um, you know, it's like it was a fun event to do. Like, no matter how bad it sucked, no matter how I'm much I'm kind of like disappointed in how it went or whatever, um, it was really cool. Like, views were awesome. You know, it's just like it's a good mental grind. It was a good test, um, but it's definitely one of those events where, regardless of your fitness level, if you've run a mountain a couple times, you know technically running better, how you might want to pace it out, what a hill looks like and how hard you can run, how like you shouldn't run. I didn't have any of that. So I like, I was like, all right, I think I can run at this pace for like maybe eight to 10 minutes. And I like ran for like six minutes and I was like, I think you've made a mistake. <laughs> and I like, so I was like, all right, just walk for a little bit. And then it was like, I honestly, I think I'd already gone too far and like my hip flexors had lit up and my low back exploded. And then it was just like, you know, like running felt good because it took some stress off of my like hips and my low back, but I couldn't run often enough to like feel good. So it was just like, it was brutal. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that just the sentence, the, just the description, 5k up a mountain in Iceland is it like it conjures up. Yeah. It conjures <laughs> up images of like Vikings training to murder. Oh yeah. Definitely felt like that. That was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's also like, you know, I, I did a lot of trail running. So like back home we have trails and they're, you know, a couple, couple hundred feet up and down, but for the most part more rolling hills. And like I was running on those pretty much every week. I was like, all right, you know, it'll be kind of similar. But like it just, I've hiked so many mountains. Like my wife and I love hiking and I don't know why it didn't like, I even looked at the trail map and I was like, all right, it's about two and a half miles and it's got 1,900 to 2,000 feet. Like I knew what I was getting into and for some reason I convinced myself it was still running. I'm like, no, it's hiking a mountain, dude. Like wrap your head around that yeah, concept. If, if all fours were allowed, <laughs> there, there probably would have been legal oh. moments of just all fours. At the very end, without a doubt. Yeah, the last like, the very last little bit before it kind of flattened out and you got to the finish line was like switchbacks that weren't switchbacky enough and they were just too like steep. So it's like they were like jokingly kind of zigzagging, but not zigzagging enough to actually make a difference. It was still just like completely uphill. They kind of played also this this interesting kind of mean trick on you guys in that the event starts at the bottom of the mountain and ends at the top of the mountain. And then the event's <laughs> over and you're just stuck at the top of the mountain. You're like, so now what? Do I leave? Do I stay? Do I just run back down? Do I like yeah. do what BKG did? We were, I was like halfway up the thing. He got to the top. I, I could just imagine like slam that buzzer. And he's like, I'm out. I want, I'm out. <laughs> this is way too cold. It's way too high up here right now. Yeah. Like I need to cool down. I need to get the hell out of here. 100%. I mean, it's like, and we, we kind of hustled down. Like I finished, asked for my time, made sure I had my time for my judge. So we were on the same page and I was like, all right, I'm out. See ya. And honestly, the way like, Paul and I were joking yesterday, like the way down is worse because like it's all those eccentrics on your quads and your calves and you're like, you get to the bottom and you're just like, I think it might have hurt more than the way up. But I mean, at least everybody had to do it. So we're all in the same boat. <laughs> so, you know, you had about, I mean, it's maybe like almost seven o'clock at this point. So you guys have had, you know, like four hours or so, five hours or so yeah. to just kind of like, just come down a little bit, recover and come back up for heavy snatches. Yeah. Something that you... Are probably excited about pretty excited about pretty that. excited about right <laughs> so how do you approach this the afternoon segment like what do you what do you do to kind of shut it down for a little bit from like an outdoor event uh, like a hip flexor lower back crushing event yeah coming into something like like a snatch ladder yeah so for me we got done around like 1 30 or so we left the venue we drove right to lunch so got a big carb heavy lunch and like ate a real substantial meal uh, and then i went back and i grabbed the shower and i tossed on a ramwad and stretched for like 45 minutes um you know, I'm, I'm a huge, I really like stretching. It like makes me feel a lot better and less sore. Um, and then I mobilize a little bit. Like I have a, like a, this weird, um, 
peanut looking thing that I can jam into my hip flexor. So like I use that and mobilize my, my glutes a little bit as well. Um, and then I just laid down, read a book for like an hour. Um, and then went and grabbed another small meal, grabbed the coffee because my body's still kind of like in that weird, like, am I in a new time zone yet? But not really. So it's like, it's actually we're, like, I'm actually kind of lifting at four in the afternoon. So it's not that late, but I like coffee. So why not? Um, yeah. And then we hit it back over to the venue just like half an hour ago. So get fired up and get ready. So there's, there's an interesting um, sort of structure to this snatch event, something that we haven't seen previously because it's a combination of both a snatch ladder and a max snatch event. Yeah. So how, how are you sort of approaching something that is both ends of the spectrum of being able to hit an increasing series of, of snatches as well as once that happens – yeah. being able to max out to, to a legitimate extent. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be... So it's kind of cool because the format's not very time-constrained. So it's like, I think, it like, for, as someone who's been programming CrossFit for, like, seven years at my affiliate, it seems like the intent is to actually let you lift heavy without much stress and have some fun. Like, they want to see big numbers, which is cool because usually there's, like, this time-constraint or there's weird lifting intervals and, like, there's too much rest or not enough rest. So we have 60 seconds to load our bar and then 30 seconds to lift it as many times as we want. And then you have that format for, I think it's 10, 10 sets, so like 10 bars. Um, and it starts really light. So it starts at 90 kilos, which for, you know, most guys is a warm up set, you know, like you're still power snatching, whatever. So it's kind of nice because as far as snatch events go, it's super low stress because you walk out and you're just warming up still in front of a crowd, which is just fun. So, um, you know, I'll basically warm up to maybe like 225 in the back and then come out and just kind of, for me, working up to 275 in an EMOM is pretty standard. Like we do that. Most snatch days we have, we start light and I work technically from like, you know, 70 to 85% and I'll occasionally hit a 275 and it feels good. Um, so basically this snatch event, the first part is just a training session. Um, and then after that, I mean, hopefully it's not a quick, it's a quick turnaround. So there's not a lot of rest because like working up 275 and then taking like a long break and having to go back down, back up, like that's, it's definitely harder than like if I hit 275 walk off the floor, hey guys, come on back out. And like two minutes later, we're lifting again. So hopefully it's a quick turnaround, but if not, I'll head into the back and I'll hit like, you know, 245, 255, um, hit a couple singles there just to make sure I kind of keep grooving and feel good. And then come out um, and just kind of let the juices flow and see what happens. So big picture stuff, last question here. Big yeah. picture stuff, you're in a really interesting position in this season right now. And yeah. I think interesting is probably like an understatement. I, I think yeah. stressful, <laughs> redonkulous, you know, out of this world, unexpected, and probably all fit, all. right? So, you know, you're you're in a place where you're just outside of a qualifying position via the open. Yeah. Um, you're competing at multiple sanctioned events. You know, you've had you have your backup, you have your backups backup. Yeah. You know, and, and as the season goes on, your chances are are kind of statistically getting a little bit better because more and more people qualify. Yeah. So how are you sort of structuring your mental approach to where the open sort of roughed out and ended up and where you are right now? So I like when the open ended the next day, like I woke up Tuesday morning, saw that I was out and I was like, all right, open over. See you guys later. And stop focusing on it because Dave and I, my coach had already lined up Iceland. We we're like, all right, Iceland timelines, roughly regionals. There's a couple of guys going who I'm assuming will have qualified. So like there'll be some good competition. It'll be a good test, but my chances of qualifying are also pretty good. So we kind of circled this one pretty big as like, all right, let's, you know, let's train hard for this. Like we would for regionals. Um, and then I also have backup plan of Lowlands next month. And then I have France after that. Um, so, but as the open started to shake out and I kind of saw how scores were coming in, I had this, like, you know, sometimes, like sometimes in life you're like, all right, well, if this happens and this happens and this happens, it'll all work out. And I was like, all right, yeah, there's this weird long shot scenario where I might make the games through the open, but I'm like. I would be a moron to bank on that. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's just too unlikely. Lo and behold, I woke up on th Thursday morning and uh, the whole Devin Ford controversy had happened. So there was a, a spot missing from there because he has said he's going to decline. Rich is out. And that would have meant that Velner was in and I was going to be the first guy out. And I was like, well, that definitely kind of sucks because that means I'm one wall ball away from just having a much more chill summer. And I was like, but if the Polish national champion gets a penalty, 
then the guy in 29th becomes the Polish national champion and I get an invite. <laughs> Thursday morning, I woke up and the guy Milos, who was in first in Poland, got a major penalty on 19.4. Dropped out. Bartek Lipka is now the national champion for Poland, which means that as long as both Rich decline and Devin Ford decline, I do have an invite to the Open. What a roller coaster of yeah. emotions and like calculus to just put together it's, these moments. The butterfly effect yeah. of CrossFit qualification <laughs> spots. It, it's kind of just bananas. It's bananas is a great way of describing it. It's kind of it's kind of bananas. Yeah. So I mean it's like it like happened and I was like oh, like I like I I, I you know I kinda of cried on Thursday morning. I was like, oh my god, like somehow the universe has smiled and like I don't have an invite, but theoretically I have a spot. But I immediately had to temper expectations because I'm like, you can't trust things outside of your control. And like, I, so I don't have an invite. Absolutely. So like this weekend is still like, I need to be the highest, like finishing non-qualified male. What's crazy is that, so it's right now, it's, it's the 3rd of May. Yeah. The athletes who earned their spots via the Open have until the 6th. To decline or accept. Exactly. Which means that no matter what, this weekend still has to be a high performing weekend 100%. for you because you won't even know until Monday for sure. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah exactly. potentially so like, Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, so I mean, they're definitely like, and I talked to like my coach and, you know, my wife, and I was like, this happened. Like, guys, <laughs> I like I, the summer may have just gotten so much less stressful. Um, but like I said, we're, we can't bank on it. So like, we're still like, I'm attacking this weekend, like a three generals, you know, it's like every point counts, every event counts. Um, you know, and also just, I've talked to a lot of friends and like talk to whoever will listen. Like, I don't really like the open as a qualifying route to the games. So I would like to punch my ticket through a, a live event. You know, it's like, that's because that to me says more about you as an athlete and as a competitor. So it's like, I want to qualify here. And if I happen to get that open invite, then, you know, great. That's, you know, that's fantastic. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, qualifying through a sanction rule is, it's more sporty. Like, you know, you don't get to, you don't get to qualify for the Olympics in, in the comfort of your own. Yeah, you're not like in your home gym. You're not repeating workouts out of win. Yeah. You're not like, you know, making exactly. sure that the music is perfect. The lighting is perfect. Yeah. You have friends with your judges. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm going to have to snatch to Shakira tonight. And I would really rather not snatch to Shakira tonight. <laughs> But it's not my gym, so I don't get to choose the music. That's okay. It's okay, dude. Your hips won't lie. That's the, that's the key to remember. <laughs> I hope they don't lie, lie, and I hit 305. That would be, <laughs> be a great way to finish off the day. Awesome, man. Well, good luck out there. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah.